Virgil Ortiz has been linked with Jerron Boots Ennis for a number of years now. While they were both at 147, people seeing them as the next up and coming generation of promising boxers. And Virgil Ortiz had a lot of issues making 147 and he made his way to 154. And he had a reaction to Boots fight and basically said that Boots didn't look great. He said that Boots looked frustrated. And he says he don't know what it is, but he hasn't looked great in the last two fights against that guy, Karen, he was talking about. And he said he didn't knock him out. And he said not to say that he needed to knock him out, just that, you know, he seemed frustrated about the fight and that he did not knock him out. So I know a lot of people are asking the question, is that fight next? I know Oscar De La Hoya had mentioned that he might want to make that fight. And um, Virgil Ortiz is 26 years old. He's fighting out of Texas. He's 22 and 0 with 21 knockouts. And uh, obviously, we all saw him get knocked down uh, versus Boa Chuck. And that wasn't necessarily an easy fight for him. Uh, some people thought he looked shaky against McKinson. Uh, this came up on my live today as well. So I think, you know, that's a great fight for both of them. Boots did mention that it might be time for him to go to 54. Virgil is a very strong fighter. He's way stronger than Karen. He may not have as much uh, fleet-footed footwork as Karen, um, especially in Karen's first fight, even though Karen kind of sat there in the second fight. Well, he didn't sit there, but you know what I mean. He wasn't. He was there for Boots to hit. And so uh, Virgil, is he's a tough fighter, man. He's a strong fighter. And, um, you know, he's fought some decent dudes. You know, you talk about Maurice Hooker. You talk about Mean Machine, who Bud Crawford fought. Uh, those are those are two solid fighters, right? So, and Boa Chuck, too, was solid. But obviously, Boots brings a whole different dynamic to the game. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of people stating that Boots is overrated and all of that stuff. Um, I think, again, that Boots put in like a B minus performance and is getting way over criticized because, you know, he's being measured on a standard that most people would never meet unless they were perfect. He was not perfect. He swam. He got wet. But for the most part, I think he just... Um, he just need to keep doing what he's doing, man, and, and tighten up. Well, I want to say he doesn't need to make changes. That's not what I'm saying. But I guess what I'm saying is to block out the noise of all the criticism and stuff like that. Because the more you hear people saying that you're not this, you're not that, it just, you know, I'm not saying he's not strong enough mentally, but you don't really need that messing with your head. So just go in there, watch the tape, watch the film, and uh, make your adjustments. And then... Just like any fight, you go in there with a game plan. You go in there uh, not trying to beat everyone the same way, but trying to beat them by taking away whatever they, whatever that is that they do best. So uh, Virgil was asked about it. He didn't like go on his live stream like, ha ha, boots look bad. But he was doing an interview on, uh, I think it's Boxing King Media out in Riyadh on the um, Golden Boy car. And he basically said, you know, Boots didn't look great. So uh, some might say neither one of them looked great in their last fight, right? So maybe they can make that fight. Maybe he'll be more confident and maybe he'll push De La Hoya to make that fight. Maybe De La Hoya will want to make that fight more. So hopefully that's what I, I hope it creates ultimately is more fighters wanting to fight and um, or, or more fighters wanting to fight Boots in particular. And uh, let's see what we get. I think Boots versus Ortiz is an excellent fight. And uh, it's a very tough fight on both ends. So let me know what y'all think in the comments. It's the baddest brand in the land. Champ side. Peace.